Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Um, one of my previous videos I showed you how, or attempted to show you how to do a trend line with MATLAB and uh, Financial Times series. Well, uh, that is incorrect. I'm gonna show you the best way to do it. Um, so let me get some code here. My data source is gonna be, uh, it's going to be um, Yahoo. So, open up a connection with Yahoo, fetch, let's say, IBM close, uh, and then uh, what I'm gonna show you here is somewhat important. So here's our closing price. Uh, you have over 3680, sorry, 3600. Uh, let me just show you uh, what we're looking at. Pull up the uh, chart for IBM. Okay, so here's the latest data from Yahoo Finance. You can see here, uh, hang on here. You can see here it's 189.64, which is 189.64. Great. Um, now if I do a plot, uh, that's all fine and good, but guess what? Um, our needs to be in reverse, uh, okay? So let me show you how to do that. Uh, so I'm gonna create a new uh, time series here. Uh, before I forget, I um, need to show you something here. Uh, let me just rerun the code again when I just entered in. Uh, and here. Okay, so this is the code that I ran. Okay, right here, the date uh, date range is from February 1st, 2000 to today's date of, uh, or yesterday's closing date of uh, September 29th, okay? So I just wanna show you that. But as I said, the most recent date is going to be the first date. So we need to reverse that. Um, so how do you do that? Let's call it close, reverse, uh, flip, UD in the close okay so you can see here our very last uh, entry of our price is exactly what we want so we reversed it so if I plot you can see here we have our uh, plot now that's all kind of cool and stuff um, but what I figure actually you know what Coming like a little lady here. Uh, might be wise to uh, to change that time frame. It's a little too much. So let's say if I go back to uh, the beginning of last year, sorry, of 2010. Okay, I'm just uh, in here. It's like you really want to watch me go through all this stuff. So I've started the range from January 1st, 2010. Gonna do that reversal, I showed you before. Uh, where's my close reversal? There it is. So there's our most recent. Let's do a plot on that. So we have uh, 1193 entries in there. So, want the plot. Alrighty. Uh, okay, so here's our plot. Um, all right, so if I zoom out, just trying to figure it should be a little higher than that, but whatever. Um, so what I wanted to show you is how to draw out a trend line for any plot, really. Um, so if you come under Tools, Basic Fitting, and you click on Linear, uh, you could put equation in there. So let's be really, that's the equation of uh, the trend line. So what we're looking for in this trend is, uh, let's say if this price action which is the close, 
crosses that trend line, we know we have potential buying opportunity. Now, if uh, it's on the other end where, hmm, let me try to think of a good, uh, let me just uh, run some other code here as another example. Um, Let's say we're going to do Ford. So that would be F. Same date range. Okay. So it looks like, uh, yeah, here, let me just flip it. Um, let me make sure that that is the correct price. So we are doing F. So at 1511, I think was our last date. Yeah, that's our last date. Um, so let me uh, close out all the other plots here. Get rid of that. And get rid of, okay, so we can plot the four now. So we're gonna plot this guy. Okay, so there's our uh, pricing action for Ford. Now, as I said before, we're gonna to do tools, basic fitting. Um, now we do linear. So again, right here, you could probably see a buying, or sorry, a selling opportunity, which it looks like we've already hit. Let's, so let's say we entered a position somewhere along here, I don't know where, but because we've um, uh, broken the trend line, still an upward trend. We could probably do a sell if we wanted. There's different ways to go about it. This is another example of a buy and sell um, and uh, just different scenarios. So where do we go from here now that we have a trend line with a closing price for a certain period? We can do uh, generate code. Now, there you go, generate a code. So now generate the function configure uh, um, I don't know, we'll call it uh, trend line, okay? Um, again, I'm doing this in real time, so we're gonna uh, uh, create a figure. Uh, we'll call it, uh, you can see the power of, of MATLAB just generating the code for you with the trend line. So let me save that. So we'll call it uh, obviously trend line. Yay. Now, uh, this other code that you're looking at, um, let me just create a new script here. Uh, new file, new uh, should be a, really a function. I'm gonna call it uh, fetch yahoo, okay? So we'll call that fetch yahoo. So we got our new fetch yahoo uh, so what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna do a really basic, uh, call it uh, symbol. Um, gonna copy in the uh, code I just put in. So we'll do that code that we just did. So we'll call the symbol. Uh, now we could pass the range date and the from and to, this is all end of data. And uh, so basically what we're doing is we're opening a connection to Yahoo. We fetch the data of that symbol. In our case, we'd use IBM or whoever, this fixed date range. Uh, as I said, we could pass that into, you know, not hard code, obviously, just for demo purposes. Close the connection and then grab the, um, closing price of the resulting fetch, which is gonna be the fifth column. So again, one last step is to do the uh, CL reverse, which is the flip, uh, flip of the, gonna close, and that should be that. Okay, so, um, just close out these little guys so we don't see the results. Okay, so let me try running this fetch Yahoo. Now I did show you IBM. So off 
it goes fetches it so what is our close reversal or reverse what do you want to call it? 15 11 so that's cool so let's try to run our uh, latest uh, let's get rid of that so I'm going to run this trend line and pass it the, uh, the CLREV okay so uh, trend line trend line CL REV and then run it so there we go so we've made on the fly two functions one that will uh, create uh, capture the uh, fetch the Yahoo data and then do a trend line now, of course I can run all this one in function let me just show you um, how cool this is so let's say we want to do Apple okay um, so off it goes does Apple now let's just make sure that it's collecting the right data. So is Apple that doesn't look right. Let me just make sure clear all and then the C or uh, yeah, CLC. So I'll clear the workspace and all that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a fetch. Yahoo Apple. Let's see what we get here. So Apple, nothing shows up. Oh, you know why? It helps to have an output argument. So we'll call this CLREV. That's our output argument. Let's rerun it. So we'll call this CLREV. So there's our CLV. Now let's hope that this works. We want to just confirm our data here, which is Apple. So 111, 111. So that's correct. Yeah. So let's try our new trend line on CLREV. Okay. So there you go. Now there's a huge drop in Apple by the looks of it. What? Does that look right? That how did it drop from 600 to? Nah, that's not right. That doesn't look right to be honest. Um, let's do a six month or a three. You know. Three month doesn't make sense. Oh, maybe there was a stock split or something? I don't know. You can just do a six month chart. Hmm, that is bizarre. But <laughs> we have a form of our trend line. So I guess, uh, where's our apple? Uh, as you can tell, I haven't really uh, added the um, uh, labels at all here, the dates and the, and the pricing. Something's not right there. Um, yeah, that's weird. Just suddenly 6.45 to 9.43. Bizarre. Um, let me just try one more. Somebody that would make sense. Uh, let's say, I don't know, Yahoo itself or Amazon. Let's see here. So what do we have? So 321, uh, AMZN, AMZN, 321, 82. Okay. So let's do a trend line on CLV. There's our trend line of Yahoo, of Amazon. So obviously here's the trend line of um, the linear path of the closing price. So in this case, I would imagine as one of the indicators that as it crosses the trend line, maybe that might be a um, buying opportunity. Uh, and then there's other factors, but I just want to show you that there, we have now the capabilities of drawing a trend line. Sorry to make this a very 
lengthy uh, video, but uh, just showing you the powers of the beauty of, of MATLAB and just being able to generate plots on the fly and uh, being able to capture data just as fast as that in, in no time. Just wanted to show that as well, the trend line capabilities, as well as um, for those uh, that are asking, why am I doing this for my new system? Um, this is gonna be one of the charts that I'll be tracking for my technical analysis for my new internal system that I'm calling the AK-47, which will be used uh, for data signals and pricing and execution and all be all these uh, data analytics service that I'll be putting out in the next probably a couple of weeks, probably most, most likely a couple of months, really. You know how software development goes. Anyways, hopefully this will help you out and uh, you enjoyed it. I'll put the source code to be the nice guy that I try to be and uh, see where it goes. Talk to you later.